I just walked out here again. We're going to do a spin around the deck, and I think I've got broccoli for you. Hi, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California and Kitty. Oh, she says, you know, broccoli, I'm going back in. And I'm going to do a quick, quick update, and it will be quick on the deck because I haven't really done much, but the plants that have been here are doing fantastic. Now, this is the Swiss chard that's been in there, and you know what? I'm leaving it. This is last year's Popolo. Isn't that weird? Look how it's growing in a big bundle. I'm leaving that too. And then I've got some flat leaf or curly parsley, I guess, coming up. Down here, I just have some kale, more celery there, tomatoes, mint, eh, some sad looking garlic chives, some walking onions, more tomatoes that are starting. We're getting the flowers up here, some more mint. This parsley, this is the curly parsley. Look how gorgeous. I'm just using this all the time. And of course, we never throw away this because this, well, now I'm just going to leave it here, is my soil. I collect all this. Not too much of the south thistle left, but I'm leaving the little bits I've got for the goldfinches and the bush tits have been coming up. This is lettuce, but I pulled a lot of it for dinner the other night, so there's not much. And this is the stevia that's trying to make a comeback. See all the new growth coming through the little tiny bits here? When I trimmed off the flowers two weeks ago, the whole plant died back. So the flowers was keeping it alive and the moment the flowers were taken off, which are like this here, it seems like the whole stalk died back. So I'm gonna leave it. But notice where I did take the flowers off and it's starting to come back. I have all new growth. So probably it, it is good to take away the flowers and then of course I think I told you this is oregano this is really tight and I got to get more out I I harvest from that all the time I use it both for when I'm making my pizza or just to make some more I just grab a big clump out I've got some in my pizza garden that's out in the rainbow garden and it is doing fantastic here is last year's basil but looky looky I showed you that last time look at all the new basil plants coming up now, I would have a ton of it, but here's the thing. There's no real brown seeds there. Here's a little bit. The birds do come in and eat the seeds. If I wanted to collect all the seeds, I would cover it in tulle, which I don't. And even here, just crumbling it up. See how it's blowing away? There's really no seeds in there. That nah, it might be a seed. It might not. So I did manage to get a few, and I really only need one basil plant. So I might actually move a couple of them. And then I've got some walking onions in there, and this is a little dill that just started to come up, some celery. Celery I'm gonna to try to keep separate from a lot of plants, so I put it in its own pot, and that's because it gets a massive root system. Think of celery root, it gets big. So this way it can do its own thing there, and it won't bother any of the plants, and it's layering. So when I water this, I don't even have to water that if I don't want to because the roots from these plants that are growing in the tote will go underneath there. And this, I haven't done anything. This is last year's pepper. It is getting very green, so I'm gonna freshen this up and do something with that. Over here, somebody might say, what is it? This is just a little flower pot and it had some marbles and I threw some marbles in there for now, but let me tell you something. I came through here earlier and there was a ton of worms underneath. So you could just put little decorative things in your totes and containers. And that too, you know, when you water it, this gets hit with water, it's gonna hold water underneath. So that works out good too. Oh wait, there's a baby hummingbird. Let me see if we can see, 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 see. Sun is going in and out. See, he's right there. I think he left. He's probably from that nest. That nest is now empty. They're quick. So a couple weeks ago, there were babies and then they're already out. So mom's been having them hang around here and taking care of the babies. It's hanging out on that tomato cage there. That's just sitting there for me, to, for my sink. That's just the sink. All right. Then I've got here, really this, what I haven't done anything with. This is just some old celery. This has got parsley, parsley. And look at this tomato plant. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that gorgeous? Look at this. And so I'm leaving that there. So this tomato plant, let's back up, is in this pot, the black one. Then this is kind of layered and because the parsley has a massive root and it's holding the pot, I'm gonna just leave it the way it is. And then I spotted in some walking onions in there. And that's the old carrots there. And let's look down here. Garlic chives, there's a celery, 
that's I think that is peppermint that's some oregano off the other one that you saw down there and then again that's the sad sad looking garlic chives it's just that garlic chives likes it a little warmer and it has been kind of, we've been cool really really cool see how I'm layering walking onions in here so I'm putting walking onions there this is garlic chive see now this garlic chive is in the full sunlight let me step over here for a minute and that has been getting shade the sun is starting to go that way and so even though this is south facing it's not getting full sun as if it was on this side of the deck so it is getting more shade and so the garlic chives do like uh, they're sun loving they love a lot of sun this is my tri-colored sage clean this up I got rid of the celery celery's down there now the thing is celery has such a massive root system that it does pull from the other plants so keep that in mind if you're gonna layer with celery I would layer with smaller things like garlic chives and walking onions and lettuce and do things like that this is taking off really nice. This is lettuce. Look how beautiful this is. See, the lettuce does fine with the sage because it doesn't have a massive root system. This is going to go to seed. And I'll probably collect some of that seed. Let's see. Let's go over here. This is just a mishmash of things. There's still some garlic chives in here and then some celery and probably some parsley because I kind of grab seeds and sprinkle it around. See, here's some. This is parsley seed, so this is probably parsley. See, I'm going to have some more parsley seeds so I can collect from that. I've got green sorrel. There's the Swiss chard. I decided to keep that. It's doing beautiful. It's also going to seed. I'm just going to leave it. And then I've got some garlic. We're kind of late in the season for garlic. All the garlic that I've planted in the past month I've noticed is slow. So I'm either going to use it or leave it, forget about it, and see what happens late in the fall and into winter. Not worried about it. This is purslane coming up because it comes up everywhere. There it is, purslane all through here. Gary said he's going to take this, so I've been leaving this for him. A little bit of sow thistle. And then walking onions, Swiss chard walking onions, dill. Cool, dill. I've got pickles now almost because I've got a lot of cucumbers in my other garden up against the wall. Here's a tomato plant. See how I layer it so the tomato plant will have its own tote here, or I should say container. It can just set its roots all over, do what it wants continue to go up and I can still plant things down here like look at the walking onions isn't that cool now these are tomatillos coming up from last year not this this and so I'm leaving this right now but I'll probably move some of them because I don't need a field plus there'll be too many in here now this we're gonna pull this out why is she pulling that look at the beautiful root system I am sorry but I really can't leave your roots either what is this? Oh, now my hands are all muddy. This, oh yeah, is mint. Now this is mint coming up from the root. So it may not, or seeds that have fallen in there, and it may not grow like other mint. It'll grow more wild. So for now, over the deck and off it goes. Hopefully it doesn't, well, if it grows down there, it grows down there. Then you've got some red vein sorrel. I grew that from seed. Going to plant that out somewhere else. This is a squash. Black Beauty zucchini more Swiss chard, and then I've got a tomato down here with some walking onions. This is a moringa. Now this is okay because this is chocolate mint, and so is that, and I'm containing that so I know that I do that from cuttings. But look at this. Moringa, and look, it's gonna throw flowers. Isn't that amazing? On the deck in just a small pot. And let's see, over here, purple basil. I've been collecting some of this seeds, and now my hands are muddy some of this seed and I've got purple basil growing in my pizza garden and I want to sprinkle some more around red vein sorrel all this walking onions oh my goodness look we've got tomatoes already look at that tomatoes coming up there I do have to thin this out there's too many little tomatoes and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put them all and then more tomato plants see how black this stem is real black I like my hands well this is going to be a dark tomato. It could be something that looks like the breads or it could look like midnight snack. It's coming up from mine, so it's going to be a hybrid. Now, this is interesting. This is just some pieces of tool I laid around. See how I covered the top here with tool? Well, I didn't cover the rest of it, so something got to it. Could have been a squirrel. It could be the birds. Probably a squirrel. I've actually found the squirrel doing this. This one, I'm either going to move it because they get massive, the purple tree colored, or 
I'm going to cover it better. I'm not sure yet. Odds are I'll probably move it and then do something with it somewhere else. This is the eggplant I didn't get out yet, walking onions. That's more parsley back there. This is elephant garlic. Look how big this is. There's two of them. Here's one there and one there. And then the rest in there is garlic. We'll go look at that in the center. Center, But uh, in a second, we'll go look at that. This is what I was going to show you. This is open on the top. This is broccoli. Nothing's gotten to it. So I took three stakes, wrapped around some tool, close pinned it, but the squirrel won't climb up to go through the top, say. And you know who wants that broccoli. We'll give it to her in a minute. Kitty, my Yorkie. The point is, they don't like the tool, so they won't touch this one, and they haven't touched this one. This is another one that's got broccoli. Look at that. This is just a cage, kind of like a little cage I made out of some toast, and it's been fantastic. I just love it. I'm going to make a ton of these because that has been growing great, this little broccoli plant. And then I've got in here onions, and I have been pulling onions for dinner. I told you that was all mint. And that's it. So I haven't really done anything. We've still been cool. I think May has been a whole lot cooler for us than April. April was warmer. I know some people have said they lost plants. Somebody, some people around me told me they put a bunch of plants in the ground. Then they lost them this month because we've been really cool. Today we're going to be about 70 and maybe we'll start warming up as we go into June. I'm not sure. Probably we will. But we had some really cool nights. So people that had their plants in the ground, one of my neighbors uh, close by did and they lost all their plants and then a friend of mine that lives a few miles away same thing they lost all their plants it just got too cold a lot of your vegetable plants really do need the nights to not go below 60 and we still were going down to 50 and that's too cold for certain plants I got hummingbirds everywhere here the Orioles been coming here got another water feature we're going to talk about that because that water feature has been fantastic so that's it these buckets have been great. I bought a whole bunch of these. You probably don't need them. But the reason I like them is I can make my compost tea in here or gather up whatever I want in here. And when I go to water the plants, this is wide enough. See how wide it is? That I can dunk this big watering can in there, pick it up, and then water the plants. Where a round one, I was using small round ones, it didn't work. And then here, nothing in here transplanted a bunch of stuff out. See, the garlic is growing slow. So I'm probably going to spot them around in areas where I'm going to forget about it. Just going to leave them in the ground and then hopefully come fall they'll take off and then I'll have garlic in the winter. And this is those dollar ones, another one I took in from outside and it just crumbled away. I used to really love the dollar hummingbird feeders and put wire around it, but they're only lasting about five or six months and then the plastic falls apart which means they change their formula. The other ones I like up there those and that one has big holes so the Orioles can feed out of it. They're made in the USA. I think I've got a label out here. I have nothing to do with them. I'm just saying first nature. I haven't had one break yet. I know a couple people told me they leak. I don't know how they leak. I've never had one leak and I've probably got about 20 or 30 of them around here. Oh look look look. Three hummingbirds feeding from the ice cream container. Oh, now they're in the coffee cup over there. Isn't that cool? They're all over here. But the First Nature ones, they've been lasting really good. Leaking, maybe you're not putting it on tight enough. I buy the ones that have the bigger holes so the Orioles can come in. But they've been really working really well for me because this is not the feeding station. This is just for the Orioles. But I've got them on the window there and those two have to be refilled. And then around the corner on the other window, I've got a... a I don't know, eight, nine of them. Then I've got them all over the garden too. But that's my favorite. So that's it for right now. Can't think of anything else. All in all, everything's pretty good. Not sure what else I'm going to put in here. I might plant a rosemary plant up here. Not that I need it. But I'll tell you, sometimes I get lazy at night. I decide to make something and I don't feel like going out in the garden to go look for rosemary. And it would be nice to have a little bit growing here. I'll see what else. But the squash is going to be fun. I'll see if I'm going to plant more or just leave the one. I want you to enjoy the hummingbirds with me for a minute. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. There was a whole bunch. They like those feeders too. You know why they're coming in? I'll tell you why they're coming in like this. This is funny. They're coming in like this because before I stepped out on the deck, it was covered in Orioles. The Orioles were all over it. Now that I've stepped out, the Orioles left, and so they feel, well, she's protecting us, so now we can come in here 
And we can drink and do our thing. See? Isn't that funny? I think that's what's going on. The moment I go back in the house, this is going to be covered in the hooded orioles and the bullocks. But they're watching me. And now, oh, in the other nest, oh, look, we have a visitor. Isn't that funny? Yep, we have a visitor. I'm not sure where you're going, but okay. He lives up on the deck. There's a lot of them. Okay, she just took off. So she's taken off and she's probably in the garden. So that's it. So I just wanted to kind of show you what's going on all in all with no work done in the past two weeks. I can come out here and harvest a lot. And don't kid yourself. I harvest the onions. I harvest garlic chives. I pick last minute parsley. I've got basil. I pick, grab some moringa leaves. Notice the leaves on towards the top are scarce because I picked those. Dill, I'm catering to that because it's a little early for dill and I'm just so happy I've got dill going. So I've been picking that a little bit when I need it, but oh, I've got dill going to seed. See, that's the problem. Once it goes to seed, it's gonna stop producing leaves and I've got so many cucumbers out there. I've gotta get some pickles made and I wanna have fresh dill for that. So that's it. All in all, I think it's pretty good. Let me see if Kitty's around. Oh, he's now over here. Yeah, you're in my way. We don't want to step on you. And don't forget, you never throw anything away that's brown. That's all your new soil. This is garlic chives. And I just grab the seeds and just sprinkle them in. So you can do that too if you start growing garlic chives. So when you got all the seeds, just sprinkle them in and forget about them. It'll look like grass. Don't pull it out. And you'll end up with tons of garlic chives. Okay, come on, kitty. You want some broccoli? Kitty, kitty. I'll give her this one. It's small. She doesn't need a whole lot. Kitty, kitty. Here's your broccoli you want it. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye, everybody.